Hop seeds. Hop seeds. Hop seeds. Oh my gosh, hooks. I want to explain. I put up a video here on our YouTube channel about two months ago, one of the first ones. It's a whole complete course. I think it's about 30 minutes. How to germinate hop seeds. Well, since then, it's gotten about a thousand people have looked at it, but I've had about 5,000 people contact me or call me or write me or email me or messenger me or what's up me on where they can get hop seeds. Please sell them hop seeds. Friends, I'm really sorry. We don't sell hop seeds. I don't have hop seeds for sale right now. Maybe in the future someday, but I'm not really planning on selling hop seeds. Uh, who knows, in the future. Sometimes we do trade hop seeds to other breeders to get different genetics when we're trying to get something different. But other than that, our own breeding program, we use our seeds ourselves, and usually there's only one or two plants, so we don't have thousands of each variety that we can uh, give out or sell. But I'm going to do my best to help you to figure out how you can get hop seeds and start your own breeding program possibly or just grow some hops from seed anywhere, almost anywhere in the world. Yes folks, my name is Max Raphael from Hops World. And tip number 31 today is hop seeds. Where can I get them? Almost anywhere in the world. Let's do it. Hey friends, glad you could be with me today to talk about how to get hop seeds anywhere in the world. Well, almost anywhere. We're going to explain the details more towards the end of the video, but it seems real easy. All I have to do is go online, type in where to buy hop seeds. Now, even if your country that you live in allowed you to get hop seeds imported. Do not buy hop seeds on the internet, okay? I bought hop seeds on the internet to see what they're like, how they turn out, what the germination rate is. Put it this way I once bought 1,000 hop seeds, zero germinated. I have also an acquaintance in Brazil who became a client of ours who bought hop seeds online. He invested with two partners, dug all the holes for 200 plants, put in the posts, put in the cables, actually hung the strings, bought seeds online, planted the seeds, had a nice tray, he had almost 100% germination. And he posted pictures on my group. Hops Brazil is the name of my Facebook group. Posted pictures, him and his partners all proud. It turns out the tray was a plant called cupina, kind of grass that cows eat. They weren't even hop seeds. So, please, don't buy hop seeds online. Watch the video at the end, I'll explain why. To get hop seeds, anywhere around the world, especially in the countries that are not the US. I have a few friends that have done this and to get seeds where you can't even get uh, that variety of plant, even if you wanted to. Uh, friends in 
Canada, friends in the US, um, in France. I have uh, another friend in North Korea or uh, South Korea and they all have gotten seeds and grown plants and now have plants growing. Uh, one acquaintance of mine who's become kind of a friend uh, grew actually 1,500 plants in Mexico where you cannot import seeds. But he got hop seeds and germinated them and got them to grow legally in his country. So, I'm gonna go on and this is the trick to get hop seeds in the countries where you can't import seeds anywhere that makes beer, anywhere that has beer factories around the world. There are countries that don't, but most do. They have hops. So what you need to do is find whole leaf hops and buy whole leaf hops. And I'll explain where to look, how to do it right here on Google. And that's what we're gonna do. So follow with us at the end. We're gonna explain a lot, some tips, what to do and what not to do. Okay, let's do it. Google it. Where to buy whole leaf hops. box full of hop seeds right from Yakima Valley folks can't wait to open it up let's see what's inside okay yeah I love these package, Artisan Hop. This is Centennial, They're only two ounces, but that's plenty. You have half a pound of Cascade. This one I really wanted was the Columbus, powerful Columbus. Well, now let's go see if we have any seeds in all these and how I check. Okay, so the really part simple now is to go through the hops and try to find the seeds. So we're gonna open the bag. few things I want to mention, really important, when these hops come to your house, do not put them in the freezer. Try to do this as soon as possible and keep them at room temperature. The other thing is, I'm not going to mention the name of the vendor here, but you want to use a big name vendor. There are a handful, Yakima Chief, uh, Yakima Valley hops here too. Uh, it's important to try to get a big name vendor that has fields and fields of hops. Certain times of year, there are tons of hops for sale on the market and they'll sell little small dinky farms in the middle of nowhere. will sell you hops just like you can get from Yakima Valley. But the difference in Yakima Valley, there are so many farms next to each other, real close proximity. There's breeding programs going on. I visited them myself. And there are male plants out there mixed in and they end up germinating the female cones. So I guess you saw, this is Columbus. It says alpha acid 15.2%, one pound. We're just going to do a little here, but we can go through the whole pound. It's better we do a little bit at a time. It's easier to work with. And what we do is, one way, if you want to try to make beer and use these cones and not waste them, you can do this right now, cone by cone. Go through breaking up the cones. When they pelletize cones, they basically break up 
the cones just like this and they actually shred the cones in dinky winky little pieces. So when you do this, your fingers are gonna get full of lupulin and man, these Columbus, what an odor. Wow, they are strong. I feel like eating one. But man, I've eaten some uh, Zeus in Brazil. Ugh, not today. But you go through, you can break up every little cone and try to find, and just by rubbing your fingers together, you can feel the little hard spots. And a lot of times the hard spot is just the stem, but they're so covered with leaf and oils at this point, it's really hard to get them out. That was the stem. So if you go through every one and break them up and look through, you will, I'd say 99% of the time, find some seeds. I've never not found seeds. There's a seed right there. Okay, it took me about a minute. Now, in, I've bought plenty of hops, whole cone hops from the state of Washington, where Yakima Valley is, the state of Idaho, the state of Oregon, from New Zealand, and from Australia. The New Zealand and Australia hops I actually bought from a vendor in the United States, but there were whole cone hops. Every single time I found seeds. One time I only found three seeds in a pound of hops, but I found 46 seeds lately in two ounces. So in a half a minute or a minute or so, I found if I was really trying, I could find probably 10 real quick. But here's what I do. Instead of going through this now, okay because i'm not going to use the hops okay i did spend i think 12 bucks or something like that I, I got a two ounce bag it was only like four bucks so i'm gonna let these not use them anyway so i take them in my hands and i rub them together and i break these cones up every single one i try to break up as much as i can it's fun too because your hands actually get covered with oil, start sticking together. You can see them getting that green gold. Whew. Now, that's an aroma. So, I go through and I break up all the cones, okay? It's nice, I buy one of these little turkey baster things uh, from the supermarket for four bucks and because it's deep and it works good for this. So once I break these up and make a pretty much a fine, it's gonna be like totally little pieces. There's gonna be a few cones that don't get broke up, but that's okay. What I do is I dry the cones. There's a nice seed right there, a pretty one. So I dry the shreddings and the cones. And how do I do that? I actually put them on a small platter, just like one of these little aluminum platters. It's only, I think they were four for $4. And they're only a half inch tall, like a cookie sheet style. And I spread them out. And I'll show you them here. And I put them in front of a little dinky fan heater. And I put it on low. I left them there for two days. So when we're done, this is how they look. Ta-da! So there it is. Nice and dry. Kind of looks the same, but just a lot shakier. Even some isn't totally broke up. If I see any, I typically grab them and give a little roll between my fingers, but you can feel they're a lot drier. You can even dry these another day or two if you want, but two days is fine because it looks like the seeds really fall off the leaves easy and they're nice and dry. Wow. The, the, the smell in the room, the aromas of this Columbus is, is powerful. My nostrils are woken up. <laughs> I love it. So here's what I do. Once I get it mostly broken up, I basically take all of the leaf. And it, that's why I don't put a ton on here. This is a pretty lot anyway on this tray. And I push it all over to one side. 
Now I take a little bit and I put it over here and I start just working it between my fingers. Any broken or, or not broken cones, I break up. If you tap it, what'll happen is any seeds will fall. It's just like a hops picker. And the little round seeds will fall and the leaves will stay up. And then when there's no more seeds, I can fill it all with my fingers. I pull it out and put it to the side. So let's grab some more. And if you see any seeds, you can see how they roll down to the bottom. And sometimes you'll have a piece of a cone. If it falls to the bottom, you just push it back up and you keep going through. And you can see the seeds fall. They're definitely separating away from the leaves. Because if you did this when it was wet, the seeds would be stuck to the leaves still because of the lupin, lupulin, and it'd be hard for them to fall. If you see a seed, I pull it out and throw it down there. I keep my eye out and I work the whole pile to see how many seeds I can actually get. Now this little handful looks like I got now already five seeds. And there's another. You can feel them and I uh, really get a hang of telling when it's a seed in the pile. So, I mean, it is two days, but damn, this stuff still, still smells good too, and you could probably still use it. It's not the best idea, but especially if you're making a lambic, if you let it age for a while. I don't know if I'd throw it out if you're making beer shortly. I might even think about freezing it. Oh, seed. So, I'm going to go through the whole pile, and we'll see how many seeds we have in this pile here. And this is only a little piece of the pound of hops that we have. And I'll check in when I'm done, let you, let you know. Okay, we are getting down to the nitty gritty. And most of the time at the end, there's a lot more seeds because they, they sit on the bottom. Ta da! Now, let's tilt this back up and take a look. We'll go for one more cleaning real quick because there's a lot of big pieces, but it may help. There we go. You can see there is at least about 40 seeds right there in this pile right here okay a couple more just fell right there so in a pound you're gonna have well over 100 seeds okay the germination rate isn't the same as when we germinate seeds and definitely check out our tip it's a whole uh, course basically on how to germinate hop seeds but, and we get from uh, our own Columbus or Zeus we have about 90% germination. And these actually have been compacted. They've been without air. They've been in a cooler. So you're not gonna get 90% germination. We just recently got 60% and probably 70% from one pack of hops from, uh, it wasn't Idaho, it was Oregon. So, it runs sometimes out of 20 seeds, I might get three to germinate. Uh, the germination rate is definitely low. Some of these seeds are probably cracked and already dead. But if you want to start, all you really need is to get one female and one male plant. And with them, you can literally by next year have thousands of your own seeds. Okay? So go get to it. Get your fingers full of lupulin and go hop seed picking anywhere in the world so wow a half pound did the whole bag a couple more seeds left the trick to this de-seeding is to tilt 
the tray, okay? And the more you tilt it, the easier the seeds will fall out, but also the easier that this leaf matter will fall. So, I think that's it. Oh, there's another one. Sometimes I hate to let one seed get away because, oh, there it goes. You never know. So, I want to show you the final count. What I'll do is turn this around and now you see how the seeds fall when I tilt this and the trick is just to keep pushing the leaves back up and it works just like a hops picking machine <laughs> the cleaners the treadmills. So, damn. A half pound. I don't know if you could see that. I'll put these into the middle. Half pound of hops. I mean, we're talking literally 200 seeds right there. There is no reason why if we germinate these, we're not going to have dozens of plants. Okay? This is usually above normal, but I will get 50, but I've gotten more than this also. But usually you get 40, at least 20. Uh, like I said, one time I got three, that was really rare. And often I'll get close to 100, but this is way above normal, but not the most. It didn't break a record. <laughs> okay, so now you know. I know some countries, it's probably pretty hard to get whole leaf hops, but I have friends across Europe who have ordered them, uh, even in the Middle East, I've uh, had friends who've got them in Africa, in, in Australia, and New Zealand easily, uh, even in the Far East. So if they're, grow if they're making beer in your country, if there are breweries and beer making fab factories, chances are you'll be able to get whole leaf hops. If you can't, you order straight from the company, okay? The companies in New Zealand send them international. Plenty of the companies on the internet in Yakima Valley, which is the first place I would go, send hop seeds international. You're going to pay some extra for the freight, but even if you only buy two ounce packs, you only have to get a few seeds to germinate. If you get one male and one female plant to germinate, they can cross each other so that female plant can literally have hundreds of seeds next year and the germination rate will really be high. Okay? Now, a couple other things. If you're going to order, make sure you order from a real big supplier. Okay? A big name company because you really want a company that has lots of plants, that has a breeding program nearby, hopefully has lots of farms nearby. Because like I said, if you get whole cone hops from an isolated farm out in the Midwest of the United States. There may not be any farms nearby and any male plants nearby to germinate them seeds or germinate them cones and make seeds. Okay, another thing. When the cones arrive at your house, do not put them in the freezer at all costs. Okay? And you should try to, as soon as possible, Go through them and get the seeds out. Once you get your seeds out, okay, here is how we store them. I'll grab some. Oh, we usually leave them, I'll just pull one pack out, in a little box, okay, inside the door of the refrigerator, in a little paper envelope, okay? 
not a plastic bag. Never put seeds in a plastic bag because humidity, especially if you open and close the door, we know how humidity gets into plastic. So I leave them in a little envelope and I put this envelope in a cardboard box so it doesn't get squished. If you squish this, you're gonna squish your seeds, okay? It has to stay about four degrees Celsius or 40 degrees, 37, 36. The temperature of your refrigerator, do not put these deep inside the refrigerator because they could freeze. You don't want these to freeze, okay? Until you germinate them. Now, germinating them. Watch our tip number 30, how to germinate hop seeds, because it's a little process. You can't just throw these in the soil. They won't sprout. So I'll put a link right here, okay? Check it out, and hopefully you'll have some success. Now, two other things I'm gonna talk about that are rather important. The first thing, when you buy Cascade, let's say, or in our case, we used Columbus, whole cones. Them seeds in that cone are going to be 50% genetically Columbus, okay? That's not a pure Columbus seed. There is no such thing as a pure Columbus seed. I know they sell them on the internet. You could buy Cascade seeds. You can even buy citrus seeds, but I'll talk about that later. There is no such thing as a pure seed that is a pure genetics, okay? So the seed that you're gonna get if it's out of a cone of Columbus, it's 50% Columbus and 50% what they call open pollination. That means that it is a male that is unknown. So we don't know what the genetics of the male plant is because it came from somewhere nearby. But that's okay. Okay, the rating of the Columbus the pack that I opened said 15.2. I actually sent them to a lab and they were over 18% alpha acids. Okay, that pack. I actually have the lab results. So, let's just assume 16% you're Columbus and you have a male that you don't know what it is. Assuming the male is the worst male in the world and has 0% alpha acids, there is a good probability that the plants that come from them seeds are going to have at least 8% alpha acid, half of them. And some could have even more alpha acid than the mother, 16%. But there's a good chance that some of the babies are going to have a good quantity of alpha acid, even in the teens, 10, 15, 13, 14, even higher, it's possible. So the neat thing about using seeds when you're creating hops plants is you never really know what the babies are going to look like. And hops genetically are not really straightforward. They really go crazy when you make crosses and you come up with some weird, freaky things. So keep that in mind, okay, that people sell hop seeds online in the United States. There's tons of them that they... They call them common hops. That's okay, but the problem is not knowing what you're getting. At least I'd rather have something I know is 50% Zeus or 50% Cascade, and then I can make crosses with that and actually make the genetics more pure without that knowing what that first original male was. Imagine if I got a seed that was 50% Zeus and it turned out to be a male and got a seed from Cascade that was female and made a cross with them in two years. Now you're talking, okay? So keep in mind that the seeds they sell online, if they say it's Cascade, it's impossible to be pure Cascade. I would say chances are it may not even be Cascade at all, okay? I'm serious. But if you wanna know at least you're at 50% genetics, you could do it this way. So next thing I'm gonna talk about is choosing the hops variety that you wanna buy the cones from, okay? This is real important for two reasons. 
The first reason is some of the more well-known hops are triploids. Triploid, what does that mean? I'm not going to explain the genetics, but it's actually a way that they change the chromosomes of the hops plant to create hops that are quote unquote seedless. So certain varieties like Mount Hood, uh, Alfa Roma is another one that are seedless varieties. They are triploids, which means that if you make crosses, chances are very good that you're not going to get seeds. So I definitely would avoid getting triploids. So when you pick varieties, you want to look up, go on the internet, and make sure it's not a triploid. It would be a diploid. But Cascade, Chinook, Columbus, Centennial, there are tons of them, public hops. Uh, you can get them from England, from really around the world, and you want to make sure they're not triploids, okay? Now, the last thing and most important, another reason that you want to pick a certain kind of variety is proprietary hops. There are, most of the newer hops are what's called proprietary, and some of them are patented. What that means is that these big giant farms and private companies evolved through years and years of investment and time certain varieties. Because I know you're all going to run out and go buy Citra, Whole Leaf, or Mosaic, or something like that, a Whole Leaf hop to find some seeds. But a lot of these hops are patented. So you could definitely probably get in trouble if you go trying to make a breeding program or start producing hops made from these genetics and selling them commercially someday. It's really not worth it. And nowadays with DNA, eventually they would find out. I mean, if you took one citrus seed and planted it and it was 50% citrus and put it in your backyard, I seriously doubt uh, Yakima Chief is going to come searching for you if you're in South Africa. But uh, legally, there could definitely be repercussions using proprietary hops. So go online and do a good search before you pick that's not a triploid, not a proprietary type. Okay? And friends, Another thing that's really important, okay, because there are countries I know that they don't even make beer. It's illegal. So there are definitely countries that you're probably not allowed to mail hops to. And regardless, even the countries that legally there's a problem with beer making or hops, there could be problems that mailing a plant, even though it's a processed plant and it's in sealed mylar, that could be an issue, okay, with importation. I think most countries allow it, but definitely check the laws of your country. That's why I put in the title almost anywhere in the world, because I don't want you to get in any trouble because of this video. So before even thinking about buying any hops, make sure you are obeying all the immigration and importation laws of your country. So. Let's do it, guys. Go online, pick your type of hops that you want, and get picking <laughs> and planting. Thanks for being here, folks. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I'll put a link over here. Check out one of our links and one of our tips and even our vlog. Don't forget our vlog once a week. Cheers to life.